Hey, what's going on everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic coming at you guys with some ACSA content. We are here with part two of week eight of the ACSA series here on Maximum Football 2020. Got ourselves a good set of games. We got four games coming to you guys today and we're also going to show the Sunshine Conference some love. So make sure you hit that like button and hit subscribe if you're new. As we get into that first game, we got Southern Virginia and Danville playing against the Montana State Helena Miners. And first play of the game, it's a fumble. A bad toss play out to the right hand side, a miscommunication. And so the Miners get the football, but will they get into the end zone though? That is the million dollar question. Montana State don't have the best offense in the world, but we're going to fuck around and find out though. As Bledsoe is going to take us up the middle for an 8 yard gain. Making a third and short coming up for the Miners. They're going to try to pick up this first down once again. A run heavy squad. But this time doing a, faking us out a little bit. And getting that pass for the first down though. And the Miners drive continues. But they're facing third and goal though. But that's going to help the cause out a little bit though. As some Virginia Danville actually draws themselves off sides. They overfought themselves. But at least the offside doesn't kill them though. As the Miners... Gonna have to go ahead and settle for the field goal. The kick is up and it is good. So they were able to get a few points off of that turnover, but we would love to see six points instead. As now the Danville Scar Scarlet Stain are gonna try to take over once again, but look at this! Another turnover for the Scarlet Stain! And they give the ball back once again to these miners. That is more than a minor issue that we got going on here, man. Is now second and five. Good trying to get to the outside. Gets it out to Bledsoe, who's got a few blockers and is able to get it into the red zone right away. Now sitting on the fifth inside the 15, thanks to a second and seven. As Bledsoe will try to get it inside the, the five yard line. Almost gets there. Just a third and short waiting for Alex Baldwin and company. Go trying to get it to Bledsoe though, but he's stuffed in the backfield once again. The Miners again having to settle for another field goal here in this ball game. The Miners going to go ahead and take a six to nothing lead. Is now first and ten, a brand new possession for Scarlet Stain. The last two possessions that we've shown both ended in fumbles, and they were both on the first play as well. So you hate to see it. So we'll see if the Scarlet Stain can have a much better drive here in this uh, quarter. As they do end up picking the first bound. But look at this. Another fumble for the Scarlet Stain. You wonder why Southern Virginia Danville is having a very difficult season so far. That might be it right there, Chief. As it's a third fumble in this first half alone. And you're giving the Miners just golden opportunities one after another. To extend this lead, they've been very fortunate that it's only 6 to nothing so far. Will the Miners finally take full advantage and get the touchdown? As Popez will try to throw it up the field, but look what happened here! Ball gets bounced million yards in the air. Falls incomplete. As they will have to settle for another field goal, but they don't even make it this time though. So a very disappointing way to end the first half of play. Hopefully we have a better second half. We had six points and three turnovers in that first half. You want to talk about a struggle bus? That is a struggle bus right there, man. As Popez will drop back the pass, third and nine. We get a first down for Verona, who's able to get across the 35-yard line for the first down on that play. As now, second and six, couple plays later. Popez going over the middle, gets it to Verona again. Not to be confused with the Corona. Is able to get another first down for the Miners. As the Miners getting themselves a nice little drive going here. Able to get across the 35 yard line. One more first down should get him into field goal range at the very least. To make this a two score game. As speaking of a two score game there's Mallory able to take it up field for a nine yarder. As now second and one. Papa is going up the right hand side. Going to Bledsoe nearly gets to... Inside the red zone for another first down for the Miners. Continuing to drive up field. Popez wanting to get a touchdown in this game. Finally! But look at this. We have an interception right here, ladies and gentlemen. 
And so the Danville Scarlet Stain, they finally force a turnover of their own. And now they have an opportunity to take the lead back once again in this ball game. We'll see if they can get it done. Is now first and ten going to go to Costin. He's got a nice lane up the middle. Only one man. The beat gets brought down from behind and then fumbles the football on the way to the ground. So the fourth turnover for the Scarlet Stain. And so Bledsoe and company return with the football again. Just been an ugly game so far. This reminds me of when football was first established in general. You know, just not a lot of scoring happening. Very reminiscent of week one here in this game. As we do get a nice play upfield, but it looks like there's a holding on the play. So they actually have to be brought back 10 yards first and 20. Not that it would matter because Smith picks up the first down anyways on the next play. Doesn't even matter if it's first and 20. Still got the first down. But after that, the drive starting to stall out, and it will indeed do that. As Bledsoe tries to pick up the first down on the ground, it was way short of the goal line, or at least the first down marker. So going to punt the ball away. Back to the Danville Scarlet Stain. Four turnovers already for this Danville offense. It has not been a great day so far whatsoever. Is now first and ten. Smith dropping back, going to the left-hand side, going to Costin, who's going to get another first down. Danville looking to get on the board for the very first time today. We have not seen them get on this scoreboard yet. As Smith will drop back again, avoiding pressure. Get up, feel it, get the first down with ease. Finally, we're seeing some rhythm for this offense. You'll love to really see it right now. As again, first and ten coming up here. Smith dropping back, going to try to sc scramble out and is able to just be brought down. A seven-yard gain on the play. As Vernon Smith finally gets him across the 50-yard line for what seems like the very first time today. We'll see if it's worthwhile, though, as they do pick up another first down, though. As again, second and six, Smith. Dropping back the pass on a couple plays later. Going to get it out to Tua 2. And he's able to spin around a couple of defenders actually to pick up the first down as well. So that's nice to see. As Smith will drop back again. First and 10. Going to try to get into a crossing route. But it's overthrown. And a couple plays later. Now facing third and 10. Going to try to get the first down with Costin. But he is well short unfortunately. And so the Scarlet Stain. Also going to have to go and settle for a field goal. That kick is good, though. So Scarlet Stain do, at the very least, get on the board. And despite how ugly this game has been for Danville, four turnovers, only three points scored today. They do have a chance to win this game somehow. I don't know how they do it, but they got a chance. Six to three, Smith dropping back. Going to go over the right-hand side. Going to try to yeet it to slants and does... But it's knocked inbounds though. The clock is still running. Now only less than 40 seconds left in this ball game. Going to try to get some yards downfield right away. He's got a man and it's under thrown. Oh, that is so unfortunate. If he had enough arm strength, he would have had the game winning touchdown instead. Going to try to go deep. Gets it to Keeter though for a first down. But they can't get to the line of scrimp. Whoa, hang on. We have one more play right here. Smith going to go for the touchdown. He's one yard shy. I don't think they're going to have enough time to get to the line of scrimmage again. And they don't. And the Miners slip away winning this first game in, in this episode. Winning 6-3. to three. As moving forward, we're going to hope for some more entertaining action from here on out. Going to check out some other teams in the, in the Sunshine Conference. Home of all these Virginia squads. Got the North Virginia Angels going on the road to play against the Thomas Jefferson Minutemen. Which will be an interesting Super South Conference matchup. Both teams, you know, fared pretty luckily in conference play. So we'll see if any either of these teams can bounce back and recover. North Virginia slowly getting up there in Vail. They win today. They do get to 500 for the first time this season. And this is a team that could potentially compete with some of these other Power 5 school schools. Um, in, in the bowl season, if they do get a bowl opportunity, back in week one, they actually took Capital of Tennessee to the wire, only losing 10 to 7. Right now, they just got to focus on these Thomas Jefferson Minutemen right here. As you go and company, 
thanks to the interception has great field position and has an opportunity to go ahead and take the lead to start out this ball game we'll see if they will indeed be the squad that strikes first as you go going over the middle it's intercepted right back by allison ending the drive right from the get-go and so north virginia gets the football back and will be getting some good field position as well they already are across the 40 yard line thanks to a good throw and catch a couple plays later they're facing third and seven oh gotta pick up this first down and it's intercepted back once again a bad turnover for the angels and the minutemen had a chance to get the lead they go free and out however and they give the ball back to these angels there is certainly an angel in the outfield for this north virginia team because they have dodged a couple of bullets already on in this ball game is now first and ten hamilton gonna go ahead and scramble upfield and slide for a decent gain of nine yards on that one is now second and one hamilton a read option quarterback gonna decide to keep it not very much running space but is able to find the room needed to pick up the chains at the very least though although that positivity will be short-lived as an illegal procedure brings him back five yards so now facing third and first and 13 Hamilton gonna have to try to go over the middle and gets it to Robinson for an excellent catch across the 35 yard line will we finally see our first points scored of the day we might have to wait and see ladies and gentlemen as the Angels are now in the red zone we'll see if they can convert first and 10 Hamilton going for the back of the end zone he's got himself a man and it's dropped batted away at the very last second and so Hamilton and company gonna try again this time throwing over the middle to Vion who's able to pick up a few yards make it a third and manageable even though this is essentially third and goal with the first down marker on the two yard line Hamilton looking towards the end zone trying to get it to Robinson and look what happens he finds the end zone, able to stretch across the plane. Touchdown, Angels. Northern Virginia will strike first. So we do confirm seeding of Angels of Northern Virginia striking first. We're about to see if Thomas Jefferson, the Minutemen football team, of course, not the guy himself. See if he can conjure up some kind of response. As you go, facing third and five, going to go to the left-hand side, get to the Ferguson, and just like that, already across midfield for a nice first down by the emerging tight end for this TJ offense. It's first and ten again. Hugo going up field, taking it for a nice little gain as well. Will be on the quarterback sneak. It's now second and five. Hugo dropping back to the pass. Going to go over the middle and gets it to Hendricks. Just outside of the red zone. Was lit up like a Christmas tree. But was still was able to make the catch nonetheless though. As another first down for the Minutemen takes them just a handful of yards away from tying this ball game here in the great state of Virginia. As Peacock Speechowitz tries to get into the end zone, but the defense reacts quickly and plugs it up. As now second and goal now. Hugo gonna try to scramble. No, get to the Campbell as he saws him over the middle at the last second. And the Minutemen respond back, tying this ball game and on top of tying this ball game, they also get a free and out against the Northern Virginia Angels. So now they have an opportunity to not only seize momentum, but also take the lead here in this football game. We'll see if they can do just that. It's now third and five. Hugo walking up to the line of scrimmage. Going to drop back and pass. Coming under center as he gets it out to Phillips over the left-hand side for a good first down. Getting across the 40-yard line in the process. As the drive will still continue now. Second and eight a couple plays later. Hugo going to Hendricks once again. Who's folded up like a napkin. But still holds on to it regardless. You know he's certainly a tough kid. Definitely watches the hockey highlights. You can say it's the same for Hugo though. As he gets folded in two different guys. Would have been called a targeting penalty in you know actual football. But this is the ACSA. We're not afraid of hard hits around here. And it doesn't even matter either as it does end up being a touchdown next play for the Minutemen. And just like that, taking the lead up 14-7. to 7. 
but there's still three minutes left. We can see some more scoring before the end of the first half, especially after that long pass play over the left-hand side. Anthony McDormand able to get across the 40-yard line already. Speaking of McDormand, there's another catch by the veteran wideout already getting them across the red zone. Will the Angels strike back here? First and 10. Hamilton over the middle to Robinson who takes a shot but is able to bounce back and get back on his feet for the first down. It's now second and goal. Hamilton going to quickly throw it to the right hand side. Gets it to Thomas for the end zone. Touchdown Angels. And end of the first half man. Tied ball game here. 14 apiece. Got ourselves a real good game here as Thomas Jefferson refusing to quit. Although Hamilton with the spin cycle one of the better runs by a quarterback this season. Getting across the 40-yard line, making multiple guys just look silly out there on the field. It's now first and ten. Thinks of that long run. Going to hand it off to Reed. Give a quarterback a little bit of a breath. <laughs> long runs, man. They can tie you out for sure. As now, second and five, going over the middle, gets it to Johnson, dangerous throw, but still is able to thread the needle there. Impressive throw, and nice catch by Johnson as well to maintain concentration. As Hamilton will continue to drive for the Angels, getting it out to Thomas on the next play. Another first down for Northern Virginia, they're already within the red zone for the most part. As first and ten, gets it to McDormand for his fourth catch of the day, another first down for the Angels. Only a few yards away from taking the lead right back. As Hamilton going to go ahead and finish the drive himself. A couple defenders trying to make a run at him. But it doesn't even matter though. A touchdown for the Angels gives them back the lead. North Virginia is now up 21-14. You'll love to see it. As a couple of drives later, we now get a look at the TJ offense. Who stubbed deep in their own territory thanks to a North Virginia punt. Talk about coffin corner. That's how you get the job done. Starting this drive off on their own two-yard line. So if you're the minute man, you're gonna want to at least get a first down or two to get out of the shadow of your own goal line. That will help the cause. As Campbell will get to that first down marker needed to keep the drive alive. So nice and situational offense for the minute man right now. But can they keep keep it going though? As they hand it, go throw it to Ferguson on the right-hand side. A six-yard gain on the play. Is now second and four coming up here. Going to be Hugo going on the quarterback run. Able to get by a couple of defenders. At least almost doing so. First down for the Minutemen. Is now first and ten. Going to throw it over, but Hawkins reads it like a book. How did that man even make the play? It completely baffles me. But what a play that we just witnessed right there as number 93 makes a heck of an interception. Fakes rushing quarterback and goes and play coverage. It gives the Angels beautiful field position to work with and they're taking full advantage of it right now. Already inside the five yard line. As now we got a second and short coming up here. Hamilton will try to throw it. Going to go it over to George. Who's going to slight, I don't know how he did it, but he like rolled his way into the end zone. Another touchdown for the Angels. And it's a 28-14 game that we're experiencing right here. As North Virginia, they certainly got some Angels in the outfield now. As they are certainly seizing control of this ball game right now. As that's another first down for the Angels once again. As now, two plays later, Hamilton. Dropping back, facing a free rusher, gets it off to Robinson though, who was just wide open coming out of the backfield, but naked open as Param Crow would once say. And it's a fresh set of downs again for the Angels as Hamilton will drop back to pass again, throwing it short to Johnson, who's able to pick up a few yards on the play, get it close to that 20 yard line once again. He's down, second and four, Hamilton dropping back, gonna throw over the middle, get it to Robinson. Who's between four, yes, four TJ defenders. Gets it in that first and goal situation. But can they punch it in though? As they get it to VC, he has to jump for it though. To prevent going out of bounds and make it an incompletion there for. If it was just a better thrown ball, it would have been a touchdown pass. But instead, it's going to be a touchdown run by Riley Reed. Not the model. Another touchdown for the Angels. 
as now it looks like they're gonna get ready to really close this clock here so hand it off to Reed one more time he fumbles the football though so hold on if they score here they could make it a game but that's not what happens though Northern Virginia wins convincingly by a final score of 35 to 14 in the Sunshine Conference matchup and now we're gonna with that being said we're gonna shift over outside the state of Virginia to watch this Atlantic Shore Conference matchup between the Warwick Rebels coming into this game ranked number two in the nation playing against Charlotte State who was a top 25 team going into this season but it certainly has been a rough ride for these guys for sure though as the Warwick Rebels are going to be set to kick this thing off ready to get this game underway Charlotte State got a lot on their hands here if they want to make this game competitive so we'll see if they do just that or if they are going to fall miserably as we got this kickoff officially underway making some men miss as he's down the sideline no one's going to be able to catch this man and he is gone like a girl in a country song touchdown kings and Charlotte State first play of the game immediately takes the lead now up seven to nothing as now we'll take a first look at the Warwick offense one of the best offenses in the entire nation as Andreas Williams gets him a nice first down but the drive might be stolen out though because they had to throw in their backup quarterback Williams actually ended up being shaken up but it won't matter though as the backup quarterback for Warwick Torches the Charlotte State defense, finds love, and they're going to love to see that. A touchdown for the Rebels to immediately tie this game at seven apiece. As you know, Charlotte State, man, you know, they had a good start, but allowing a touchdown, as long as it was, you know, kind of deflates the, the atmosphere a little bit. Kind of like they were expecting to give up that long touchdown, to be honest with you. As Wiles is able to pick up the first down on the play. It's now Charlotte State offense back on the field. Going to be a quarterback keeper for Smith, who is folded like a napkin, but is able to pick up some yards on the play, though. A seven-yard gain on the on that one. It's now Smith dropping back. Almost throws an interception as the linebacker comes up and deflects that pass away. Now third and three. Don't want to settle for a punt here, and they won't have to for right now. As Wiles picks up the yardage needed to pick up the first down. Now, first and ten. Bath Smith going over to the left hand side. Gets it to Nalaga, who's able to make one man miss, but is tacked from behind. Fumbles the football and gives it over to the Warwick Rebels. Not what you want to do when you're playing the number two team in the nation, but it is what it is, though. You're going to have to try to recover here. Is now third and short. Williams dropping back, facing pressure, makes a man miss. Gonna spin out there, get the spin cycle in the laundry mat going. Because Williams got it going on, man. When your quarterback is able to pull off some nice spin moves, it's gonna be a long day for the defense. We'll see if that will hold true or not, as it's still only the first quarter of play. But it's second and short right now. Williams will drop back the pass again. He's looking around. He's gonna go ahead and scramble up field again. With minor injury not bothering him anymore, obviously. As it's a first and ten again. Williams dropping back. He's looking around. He's got a man in front of him. Gonna throw it deep towards the end zone and gets it to Curtis somehow. Inside the five yard line. What a throw and what a contested catch by Curtis. As the Rebels continue to move forward. Second and goal now. Trying to get into the end zone and finds Curtis again. For another touchdown in the Warwick Rebels. Take the lead. Now being 14-7, because of a Charlotte State free and out, the Rebels are on the move once again. Looking like the Empire in the Star Wars movies, because they're looking silly against the Jedi. As Williams, looking back, going to go over the left-hand side, able to scramble for a few yards on that one as well. A five-yard gain. It's now second and five again for the Rebels. Williams going to try to throw this one. He's got a man deep. Is he going to make the catch? He finds Curtis. And not only does it complete the pass, but a roughing the passer penalty is involved as well. So that is going to indeed, you know, get them in. And they get into the end zone the next play. However, 
there is a holding penalty so that's going to knock them back a notch as they try to pick up those yards back it's incomplete though so second and goal now from 11 yard line keep in mind this goal line situation started at the one yard line as they almost had another touchdown they had curtis wide open but could not connect there it's now third and goal from 11 williams dropping back he's got a clean pocket gonna throw it towards the corner of the end zone and finds his man finds curtis who gets into the end zone touchdown rebels dancing in front of the cameraman here in charlotte state and warwick just opening up this lead right now 27 to 7 already so since that kickoff return for a touchdown they haven't been able to do much of anything but their fortunes might change though as watson goes deep on the rebels and burns the defense and so the first touchdown for charlotte state since opening kickoff a huge 75 yard touchdown and look at this they're also going to go for two here not understanding the logic they might get it though as they try to dive for it but it's no good smith did not break the plane so 27 13 in favor of the rebels as Charlotte State will have to kick this thing off once again. Gonna bat, bat this thing deep. Almost a touchback. Touchbacks, of course, are a rarity here in the ACSA. As this could be trouble. It's Curtis. He's got some space. He is gone. Like a girl in a country song. Marshall might catch him, but he's not gonna have enough time to get it done. Curtis. Again. Another touchdown for the Rebels. And a convincing win for warwick the number two team in the nation dismantling the charlotte King state kings by a final score of 40 to 13 improving why they should be the number two ranked team in the nation thanks to a great win that we just witnessed right here so now we'll go ahead and get into the final game of this acsa episode a little bit of big north action for you guys to close this thing out as we have the number 17 team in the nation and the Hawafa chiefs going on the road to play against a bottom dweller in the big north conference in the rugby boiler makers so it is about to go down as now first and 10 coming up gonna go over the middle get trying to get to his receiver is incomplete as we'll pick things up here in the second quarter both teams kind of feeling themselves out surprisingly rugby playing great defense but that defense is going to be certainly put to the test as they throw an interception on their side of the field. But yet the Boilermakers get extremely lucky only getting a field goal on the play. But it won't last long as Tolis breaks away from the pack and gets into the end zone for our first touchdown of this game. Tolis able to bring this thing back and give the Hawafa Chiefs the lead. 10 to 3 here late in the second quarter so maybe the Chiefs are starting to find themselves a little bit but wait hold on a second we got a fumble on the field and the rugby boiler makers actually recover it and so Kutai and company with a chance to tie this ball game before the end of the first half we're going to be able to get it done though we're going to have to wait and see is now first and 10 Kudai dropping back get it to Noble who's able to nobly get across the 10 yard line first down for the Boilermakers and shoot we might be able to see them take advantage of the turnover inside the five yard line now is Kutai dropping back once again he's looking for somebody to throw to but he's gonna just take it in himself but fumbles the football on the one yard line trying to get that extra yard needed to tie this game they don't get it but they are very fortunate that the Hawafa Chiefs went free and out. They'll have another crack at tying this game before the end of the first half. We'll see if they actually get it done this time around. Will there be another turnover on the field as Mudo nearly gets into the end zone for the Boilermakers. One yard shy. They're going to try to power it in with Noble. And they do just that. The Boilermakers of all teams able to tie this ball game up now tied at 10 apiece as we are now in the second half this game could still go either way well i'm the chiefs man taking these boiler makers for granted because even though they are a bottom dweller here in the big north conference they are still a team that needs to be taken seriously 
they can beat a lot of other teams, you know, in other conferences. Rugby just happens to be one of those teams that's, you know, not happens to be the worst in one of the best conferences in college football. You know, we're seeing that right now of a parity in this conference as well. The second and four coming up. Kutai going to throw it over in the middle and try to get to his receiver, but it's bad away at the last second. So now third and four coming up here. Kutai going to hand it off to Noble, who makes a man miss. Makes some more men miss, and Noble is gone. Touchdown for the Boilermakers. And hold on a second, guys. We might have ourselves an upset alert to end this episode. Rugby up 17-13 midway through the third quarter of play. It can certainly swing either way. As Rugby now with a 17-13 lead. Kutai will drop back the pass. Throw to the right-hand side. Get it to Noble. Who nobly hurdles over a defender. Makes some guys miss. And pick up the first down in the process. So you love to see it. As two plays later. Second and six. Gets it to Pike up field. What a throw. Double coverage. It doesn't even matter. So the Boilermakers might even make this a two-score game on top of that. Would it be huge for the Boilermakers, especially if they get it in now. But Noble is just a few yards shy. It was a Noble effort, however. It's now first and goal. Kutai dropping back to pass. He's looking around. Going to go over to the right-hand side. Gets it to McGee. Touchdown, Boilermakers. And the lead is extended. And the number 17 team in the nation is in very deep trouble. Even though it's the third quarter of play, this thing could get pretty bad pretty quickly for the Chiefs. As now, second and 10. Holt going to try to throw to the right-hand side. It's incomplete. Was looking for a roughing the passer penalty, but it did not come this time around. It's now third and 10. Gets it over to Parrish on the right-hand side. Gets it to the 40-yard line. But it looks like one of the rugby defenders is down. Will be out for the remainder of this game, which is very unfortunate. He turns out to be one of the captains on this rugby defense. So losing their leader as they are trying to hold on and beat the number 17 team in the nation. They're going to have to do it without their defensive captain. We'll see if the Boilermakers are ready for the challenge. He's now second and five. Going to get it to Tolis. On the right-hand side, able to get across the 15-yard line for the first down. As they continue to move upfield, Holt dropping back. Going to go over the middle, gets it to McKenzie, and he's in. Touchdown, Chiefs. They make this a one-score game. And if they want to, if they want to go for two points right here, a two-point conversion will only make this a field goal game. And that's what they're going to try to do, get the two-point conversion. Holt will drop back and try to get there, but the defense holds up. Does not allow the two-point conversion to happen. And going into the fourth quarter of play, Hawafa down by five points in this ball game. They'll need a touchdown to take the lead. We'll see if they can do it as Holt will drop back again, going over the left-hand side to Parrish, who falls across the 35-yard line for a first down. Now two plays later, Holt will drop back once again, this time in the shotgun formation. Holt going to send this one over to the right-hand side, gets it to Hines. Not sure how that catch was made, looks like there was tight coverage over there. But sometimes it's just simply better to be lucky than good. That's what we just noticed right there, as they they're still driving down this football field. Get an incompletion this time around, forcing a bad decision that could have been picked off. And again, you know, falls harmless. To the ground, though, as Holt will try to pick up a few yards and do just that. So now third and five coming up. Holt will drop back once again. Looking over the middle and gets it to Munson, who gets it to the 40-yard line for these Chiefs. That is certainly it, Chief, getting that first down right there. Can they continue it, though? Get it to McKenzie. Makes a man miss, but fumbles the football. Key of rugby recovers. And it could be a costly mistake. It would have been more costly if rugby would have actually scored. But they left some points on the board for sure because they let a golden opportunity slip right through their fingers. So still a one possession game. But Hawafa really needs to score here as they'll go over to Parati. He's able to get an eight yard gain across the 40 yard line. Hawafa with another chance to take the lead. Do they take advantage this time around? 
as Holt going over in the middle gets it to Hines. He gets it across the 25 yard line. And the Chiefs now driving once again. Four minutes left and counting. Can they get a potentially game winning score right here? As Davis will get them across the 10. It's only a handful of yards between them and taking the lead. We'll see what happens here as Holt will throw over the middle to Munson. It's really close, but they're going to be one yard shy. The one yard line monster stopping them from now. But they still got a couple more plays. And Tolis gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Chiefs. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that, Hawafa has the lead. But they will try to go for two in order to make this a three point game. Tolis going to try to go to him. But it's it, no good. So only a one point game. As Hawafa will be set to kick back off to the Boilermakers. Three and a half minutes left to play here. Only a one point game. We'll see if the Rugby Boilermakers can pull off this upset here on this ACSA episode. And that's going to really help the cause. 14 down the sideline. No one's going to catch him. He's gone. Touchdown. Boilermakers. What an emphatic way to take the lead. And they also force Halafa the punt. Going to rely on the defense. And it doesn't look good for the Chiefs as Noble picks up another first down. The Chiefs having to take their final timeout. As it looks like the Rugby going to be ready to take this one. No! McGee was wide open all by himself. They did the engage eight. But it doesn't work out. That is the risk when you do the engage eight. You have people get behind you. And that's just what happened. And we do get an upset here as the Rugby Boilermakers beat the number 17 team in the nation 38 to 25. So now with that last game between the Hawafa Indians and the Rugby Boilermakers completely done, let's go ahead and check around the ACSA and see what other scores have occurred around the league. Starting with the David Crockett Mavericks hosting conference opponent in the Quinn College Indians. David Crockett gets it back on track, now defeating another big Southwest Conference team, winning 26-3, taking their first loss last week. They got it back together. However, within that same conference, we actually have a huge upset in Sugarland State, destroying the number six team in the nation in the Southern New Mexico Cougars. Winning 31-7. This is a huge win for that Sugarland program. Meanwhile, the Vienna Patriots from the National Athletic Conference continue to do some really good work as they take care of business against Philadelphia Tech. Improving to 6-2 uh, thanks to a 41-3 victory. Philadelphia Tech falling to 1-7. Wake Oswego continues to show why they should be a top 25 squad as they played a solid Colorado Tech team who did... You know, give them a fight, but Wake Oswego was able to pull it out eventually, winning by a final score of 17-6 in this Rocky Mountain Conference matchup. The Colonials of Delaware at Kent University went on the road to play against former Time 25 team in the Lebanon Aviators, representing the great state of Maine, and they took care of business with ease, winning by a final score of 32 to nothing. Could potentially be that second team that challenges Warwick for the Atlantic Shore Conference Championship at the end of the day. Keeping it in the Atlantic Shore Conference, we have the Southeastern Coast of Florida hosting the Indian Trail Chiefs and won pretty handily, winning 37-3. This team is also one of those squads that are going to try to get in the mix to play in the Atlantic Shore Conference Championship game. On the other hand, Herbert Hoover is now going in the wrong direction, now taking an upset loss to the Florida Panhandle Hurricanes who get just their second win of the season. Herbert Hoover, meanwhile, t loses their second consecutive game. We'll see how far they fall down in the polls. Speaking of crazy upsets, we have the University of Mid-Atlantic Crabs, who came in ranked number 19 in the nation. But I don't know if they're going to stay in the top 25 after this game. They get shut out by Florida Tech, who is under 500 going into this game. A great win for the Techies. They're now sitting at 500 once again at 4-4. Four and four. Detroit State also uh, going into Big North Conference play, hosting the Northern New York Freeze, who was 4-0 in non-conference play, but now has been given their fourth straight loss, a close defeat to the Detroit State Pitbulls, who improved to 6-2, whereas Northern New York has taken their fourth consecutive loss this season. 
Meanwhile, keeping it in the Big North Conference, Indiana Fortson takes, destroys, just breaks all the hopes and dreams that the Lincoln Fighting Assault had, shutting them out on the road, winning by a final score of 51 to nothing. Indiana Fortson gets back on track with a 5 and 3 record, while the Lincoln Fighting Assault also fall to that same record. We also have another big set upset in the ACSA as the Cab AM came in ranked number four in the nation and was one of the few undefeated teams that was left in the ACSA. They fall at home. The Moorhead State Boilermakers, who are towards the bottom of the ACSA, at least in the Big North Conference, beats them by a final score of 19 to 16. A great win for that program. In the meantime, we'll check things over in the Stars and Strive Conference to see how things are going along. The Spring Creek Move played host to Southwestern New Mexico, home of the Hellhounds. And Spring Creek takes care of business, man, winning by a 37 to nothing shutout, getting themselves back on track. They are now, you know, putting themselves in a much better position to make it to that Stars and Stripes Conference Championship game after a slow start to this inaugural season. On the other hand, Little Rock, after an impressive victory against, you know, the former number one team in the nation in University of Alabama Hanover, they played an unranked team themselves in Mississippi A&M, who has been on quite a skid lately, but lost really badly, losing 32 to nothing. For now, they still remain on top of the Super South Conference standings. But let's see how this affects them in the top 25 polls when those come out next week. Another top 25 team to lose is the Sibayu Dream. Losing to the Erlanger Barons, one of the few team, actually the only team in the Super South Conference that was under 500. Sibayu losing the Erlanger by a final score of 17 to 6. They might fall out of the top 25. But they aren't the only top 25 team in the Super South Conference to lose. Coastal Alabama played host to AJ Moore Academy and also lost, losing 16 to 13 in what was a very contested ball game. A tough loss for this Coastal Alabama football team. And look at this! We have another top four team going down. The capital of Tennessee loses to Central Georgia A&M 20 to 6. As this is the first loss that Capital of Tennessee has taken Central Georgia A&M since their week one upset loss is now 6-1 since then. This could be the moment that gets them back in the top 25 since that inaugural week, you know, in this inaugural season. And the last game that I wanted to talk about is the Southern Alabama State Hyenas playing the Prairie Viewville Prairie Dogs in Super South Conference play. Southern Alabama State gets back on track, winning by a final score of 31 to nothing. This should get them back in the top 25 polls, whereas Prairie View does take their third loss of the season. So that will do it for today's ACSA episode. This time tomorrow, we have another top 25 matchup in the Super South Conference. We have the Chattanooga Tech fighting Bass going on the road to play against the University of Alabama Hoover. Both teams losing in the previous week. So let's see who gets back on track with tomorrow night's episode. That will be a premiere, of course. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed today's ACSA action. And if you did, do me a favor and please smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you happen to be new as we are on the path to 1,000 subscribers as of the recording of this video. Would love for you to join me on that experience. But until then, I hope you guys are all out there having a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.